All right, guys, welcome back. We've got a massive update that just dropped over on the forum. So I'm going to go and pull that up. Let's go through them together. We got some big stuff awaiting us. All right, so over here on the forums, future update notice. So essentially, it's kind of like a little dev note, um, but it didn't fall under the dev note section, which was kind of interesting. But essentially, this is one of those big notes that gives us all of the future plans that they have for us. Uh, specifically, this one is covering stuff that's going to be happening uh, this month in November, finishing up this month, as well as into November. Uh, we already know some things that are out there in the future, uh, specifically Heath, the new summoner. That's probably going to be next year, um, mostly because he wasn't mentioned here uh, in these updates at all. But there is a a ton of stuff in here um, some really exciting changes new monsters ld nat fives all kinds of stuff let's get into it so uh, first and foremost, I'd like to introduce you to the updates plan for the month of November. So mostly this is, you know, the end of November sort of stuff. So this Thursday's update for North America, as well as uh, next Thursday's update as well over Thanksgiving. Uh, we do have the dragons are coming. The dragons will be here this Thursday. So that is a uh, welcome addition to all of our monster families. I'll do another video covering my thoughts on all the different dragons. Overall, I think they're all very good. Maybe not must pulls, but pretty much must pulls on all three of them. Moving on, though, we have massive balance changes specifically to bombs and bomb monsters. So I'm very happy. One of my monsters that I got, Gianna, the Dark Oracle, is a bomber, and I think she's going to be seeing a lot of play here in the future, thankfully. So some of the monsters that are getting affected by this massive balance change is going to be the Fire Pirate Captain, Fire Joker, Fire Kobold Bomber, Imp Champion, Monkey King, Pioneer, and Garuda. Now, not necessarily all of these monsters have bombs, but they're also getting changed along with the bomb update. So we've got Water Joker, Kobold Bomber, Mermaid, and Water Monkey King. Glad the Monkey Kings are getting looked at because they're pretty weak right now, except for the light one, as we all know, Rude is OP. Um, Wind, we got the Kobold Bomber and Oracle. Unfortunately, all the bombers have just been kind of useless, except for the Dark one. Honestly, I feel like the Dark one's pretty good. Um, dark Joker, as well as Dark Oracle, my Gianna. And then finally, Light Kobold Bomber. All of these monsters getting uh, revamped in some way. The bomb effect will be revamped. So how bombs work overall is going to be completely new, completely different, and hopefully find a place into the meta, because right now it's pretty stale. Um, we are also going to be getting a bunch of new skills for our summoners. Um, they're all going to be first skills. So this first skill right here, let me show you guys on, on the screen. So for instance, I'm on my Korea account on my Saleta. If I come over here to the skills here, you can already see that they have the new first skill. In this case for Saleta, it is Breeze. So you can see on the first one here, if caster has Fletch, uh, target is more than seven meters away, damage dealt up 20%. And then if caster has Fletch, remove immunity. So if it's a heavy immunity meta, this is definitely going to be something you'll want. Honestly, I think remove immunity is probably better than damage overall, since immunity is kind of everywhere, but we'll have to see. So uh, we got a bunch of new summoner skills. So we'll cover all the summoner skills when they do come out, which ones are best, which ones are not. Uh, overall though, make sure that you have enough of the skill books. Uh, let me see if I have any here. Yeah, you'll need a decent amount of these on screen, these skill books uh, in order to purchase the new skills. So make sure you have a decent stockpile of those. For those of you that have been playing for a while, you probably have a ton of these. All right, a um, couple small things I saw. For Galagos runes, this is just kind of like embedded in there. For Galagos runes, passive skills like endure, attack up, and damage over time slash unrecoverable applied to creatures will be deleted. Trap damage will be reduced and summoner's basic move speed will be increased. Just wonderful. They just keep nullifying Galagos down to a point where it's just pretty easy, which I love. I just want my rewards out of Galagos. At this point, I've run it so many times that it's just it's not really fun per se. Hopefully, I believe down at the bottom of this update, we've got a revamp to Galagos that's beyond just these. Okay, here is the big one, okay? Some fantastic news about obtaining a five-star light and dark monster. Global Chronicles Book One Fairy Queen's Gift Event will start. So, if you any of my Sky Arena players remember, the Light Fairy Queen Fran was an absolutely OG, such an incredibly versatile monster, honestly was used at even some of the highest levels of play, uh, even up against massively OP five stars. So we'll see. We can check out actually 
this is the Summoner's War Sky Arena page for um, Fran. And some of the notable things for her, like her identity as a monster, is immunity, attack up, and cleanse. That's kind of her identity skills. So I believe that she's going to continue to have immunity um, and then probably cleanse as well. Like a full cleanse on the whole team would be really, really cool. Um, traditionally, she has a single target cleanse, which cleanses everything. That would be cool too. Um, so she's definitely going to be a support of some type, but how many of the skills that they bring over from Sky Arena? Not sure yet, but I think immunity is definitely going to be uh, one of them. Okay, uh, let's keep going. We're going to have 100 days uh, left until Global's anniversary. So this is, we have celebrated the Korea release. We've celebrated now the North America release. It's ongoing celebration. Now we're going to start celebrating the Global release, which was the largest release uh, of this game. So arguably going to be the largest event with some of the coolest rewards. And this is really, really exciting. So we are getting Dark Fairy Queen, which wasn't a monster in Sky Arena, but now we get it. So we have Dark Fairy Queen, and this will be the first monster that we'll be able to obtain uh, in this event. Artwork, obviously, OP as usual. Shout out to the art team because they are just absolutely phenomenal. So we have the Dark Fairy Queen. I actually don't know what the monster's name is going to be. But um, we are also going to be getting the light one, Fran, which we all know and love. But that's going to be coming later at the end of the event, as far as I'm aware. So probably more in December. So as we progress through this 100 day event. So no idea what the dark one is going to do, but the dark one looks awesome. And then here is the light one, Fran. Gosh, it's gorgeous. Awesome. Love it. All right. So let's keep on going. That's going to be really exciting, guys. It's always nice to have free LD five stars. Hopefully they're actually good. That's that's the biggest thing. We love um, some of our heart magicians. You know, they're pretty useful in a lot of places. So hopefully these are also pretty useful and not just kind of a, a throwaway gift from Com to us. So lots of really cool things lining up for the anniversary. Um, we talked about it in our last video. We have a new monster affinity system coming. Um, by the way, this is all all of what we just talked about is next week. So this is saying um, next at the end of November, the last week of November. So all of this stuff that we just talked about, uh, the changes to monsters, balance changes, all the summoner skills, uh, dark um, fairy queen here, all of that's going to be uh, dragons included. All that's going to be uh, on Thursday. And then next week after that, so the week after that, we will be getting the additional stuff, which is in this patch note here. Okay, so we get the monster affinity system, which is the buddy system, the friendship system with your monsters. So we'll cover that when it does finally come out. Um, we'll be able to do also transmogs, essentially like transforming into uh, the different monsters. So that way we can have increased mining, increased uh, fishing, uh, increased gathering. So just overall some cool systems getting added into the game. Uh, of course, we do have the uh, Magitech system. Um, Chronicles Farmer has done a pretty detailed, in-depth uh, look into the Magic Tech systems. So I'll make sure to link his video here so you guys can go ahead and check that out. Uh, he does a pretty good job of breaking down the system and what it costs and what it's going to take to get the most rewards out of it. Um, okay, what I'm kind of excited about, and it sounds like somebody over the devs have been listening to me on stream. This is our new battlefield. And it looks kind of like a MOBA battlefield to some degree right? You've got the towers out here in the middle. Um, the goal here is to actually, it's a 3v3, okay? Howling Cliff mode is a 3v3, which is nice. I, I think I like the reduced amount of numbers. It makes it feel a little bit more intimate, makes it feel like a less, um, sort of less scattered and less random. Um, you know, you just get ganged up on by three or four or five people, and it's just like, what do you do in Battlefield sometimes? So this is going to be a little bit more intimate, 3v3, like that. Looks like you're going to be able to like hit these towers along the way, much like a traditional MOBA, uh, and you'll be able to work your way towards the end tower and do damage to the end tower. Uh, the team that is able to either destroy or, you know, the team that does the most damage to that end tower uh, is going to be the victor. So I've been saying it for a while now. I would love to see like a traditional MOBA style battlefield arena where we could bring in our monsters, you know, equip them with different things, level up similar to some of our favorite MOBA games out there like League of Legends or Dota or something. Uh, I think that would be a really cool system and maybe actually get me to play more Battlefield. So this is really exciting to me. I might actually want to play Battlefield now. 
Um, they are making some big changes to the battlefield entry time. So instead of the two-hour intervals, much like the Brawl Arena, they're going to be opening up for uh, nine hours, it seems. So I, I don't know what that means. Is it going to be nine hours straight? And then the other half of the people that work night shifts or day shifts or whatever, are just SOL, I have no idea. So we'll have to see what that uh, that means here in the future. But they are changing up the battlefield uh, times. Uh, we will also be getting our Christmas event, so that's going to be exciting. Probably a lot of stuff for our, our winter festival Christmas event. Uh, really cool little transmog that we're going to be able to, you know how we can, right now we can transform with the potion into our little Naraka dragon. Uh, a white version is pretty cool uh, as well, called the White Crystal Naraka Transformation. So it looks like there's going to be some sort of little um, mini event that we take part of escorting a Naraka egg or something like that. So looks pretty cool to me. Uh, lots of dungeons and four new bosses a part of this event. So hopefully it'll be a little bit of fun. Um, of course, there'll be check-in events, lots of different events as usual with these type of things. Honestly, I, I, I enjoy the amount of events that Com to us gives us in this game. Like if you play every single day and you put in there a little bit of time, you can get a lot out of this game by com uh, completing the events and being a part of these different events. So it's uh, pretty generous in, in my opinion, as far as events go. Um, a couple other small things. Oh, I say small things. Yes, this is a small one. Furthermore, you will receive dragon balls each time you exchange gifts, which can be used to acquire mystical and legendary scrolls. Occasionally, you may come across shiny dragon balls. And when you collect all seven shiny dragon balls, you can claim a mysterious reward we've prepared for you. So coincidental i think not we will have to see uh if that means a future collaboration here uh down the road so it is kind of tied in uh, with the christmas event so I'm not sure if that's supposed to mean something else because we are also doing the dragon here but the seven mm, don't think it's coincidence but we will have to see um next up we got changes to the arena um some small little things here um Basically, we can do friend battles a little bit better, do like a best of three, best of five. So it's going to be a lot better for the tournaments that we host and other future content creators are going to be hosting as well. Um, so that'll be helpful in, in organizing and managing those tournaments. Plus, if you're at the high level of arena, they're also going to be hiding the... Um, the summoner name and they're going to be hiding all the information that way you can't like snipe certain people or guilds can gang up on each other and make sure people don't get to the top or whatever so it's going to hopefully make that a little bit more difficult for the top level players but um overall uh probably a good change overall i'm sure that they'll find a way around it though um, we are getting a world boss improvement essentially just more uh, rewards will be based on the accumulated damage now, these are two separate lines. It says world boss system is improved. And this one says uh, about the accumulated damage, meaning that we'll get rewards based off of how much damage our server does. Um, we knew that already, but this line is new. The world boss system will be improved. So maybe that means that the entirety of the system is going to get a little bit of a revamp. I know that it's good. It's a good piece of content, but at the same time, it's kind of at its infancy stages. And I feel like it needs some tweaking in order for it to be a little less stressful. Um, and a little bit less time consuming and taxing on people. So hopefully they they are looking into that to making it a little bit more enjoyable of uh, content. Uh, season two uh, guild raid. So we are getting this boss. This is the one that is at the end of the Tower of Ascension hard mode level 20. Essentially, it's a clone of the one punch man boss um, Kabuto or whatever. Um, so pretty decent, you know, strength boss. It's definitely going to change up the way guilds have to sort of coordinate and get this guild raid boss down so we'll definitely see obviously i'll be streaming you guys can uh, check out our guild raids in the future and then we got some quality of life improvements we love quality of life improvements when changing weapon attributes an option will be added to simultaneously switch to the specified weapon slash sub weapon of the same set this will make it easier to switch between mythic weapons of different attributes so um Basically, what I'm getting out of this, I think this is the connection thing we talked about in the last video that we didn't quite understand. But essentially, if I swap from my fire weapon to my water weapon and my water weapon happens to be, let's say, the Metis weapon, which is better for PvE, it's also going to switch out my sub weapon or my shield. It'll switch that out to the Metis as well, because if you think about it, if I'm running Naraka sub weapon and then I switch to a Metis 
weapon, then it, it cancels out each other and we don't get the benefit anymore. So it's essentially if you switch to a, diffic, a different set, then the sub weapon will switch as well. Of course, as long as you have it already connected and built. Um, but that'll be kind of nice. I think later on down the road, that'll be something that we do to min max our damage where it's like maybe we're running Galagos and we want to switch to a different set. That'll be pretty cool. Um, in Guild Infinite Raid, uh, you can now check monsters used by other summoners. So that's kind of nice. Um, just like all the other dungeons, we can see what other people are using, which is very helpful for new players. It's helpful for me sometimes. So it's really nice to see what other people in your Infinite Raid Guild are using. Uh, and you can sort of devise a strategy of your own. Storage will now be accessible through uh, the regular UI. So that is going to be um, super nice. Actually, if I switch over to the game real quick, you can see that I'm on my Korea server here. Uh, if I click the button up here for the bag, I come down here. This is our storage button. And here's our general storage, right? Here's all of our storage. So no more going to our friend over here uh, for storage. Um, so that's kind of unfortunately, he has lost his job due to quality of life improvements. Rip. All right. Last couple things. Let's talk about um, Monson. Let's see. Storage. The default quantity available in ex pieces exchange hop. I didn't quite understand this one. Maybe somebody down in the description smarter than me can understand what this is. Pieces exchange shop will be changed from one to the maximum exchangeable quantity of 999. Not sure. Um, small other quality of life features. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Plus, we are getting new transmogs. We know we love our transmogs. Let's zoom out a little bit here so we can see. We've got Polar Queen transmogs. Looks like like more Valentine's Day sort of, or even like pop star transmogs here. Uh, we've got the Polar Queen, Occult Girl, and Valkyrie. They always, it's always those, right? We can get some transmogs for some other monsters, maybe. We got some really cool monsters out there. And then the Valkyrie one, which looks dope as usual. So all of these uh, pretty cool transmogs. And then in December, there are some exciting things coming later in December. Um, Fran, the Light Fairy Queen, will be probably later in uh, December as we get through the event. Um, but many other exciting things, uh, the new monster fairy queen, legendary skill artifacts. So legendary artifacts and a newly revamped Galagos dungeon. So I saw this was separate from the other Galagos changes. So not sure what that means. I know there's a lot of kind of complaint and a little bit of hate about Galagos dungeons, maybe from me. Um, and it would be really nice to see a total revamp, give it something new, fresh coat of paint, something to give it a little bit more enjoyment to the players. All right, guys, that's it for me. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment or if you just want to have some hype for this upcoming update, it's there's a lot in here and I'm super excited to play over the next couple months. Um, make sure to leave a like on this video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you've been enjoying the content. Plus, you know, I do live streams as often as possible. So make sure you hit the bell notification so you can hit me up on one of those live streams. All right, guys, I'm Topher Smurf telling you to keep on gaming.